All right, welcome everyone. Thank you, Brian. Uh, it is, I'm delighted to, uh, my name is Ken Spiro. I am the CEO and uh, founder of School Sims and I'm delighted to be here with you today for our first webinar of this school year. Um, and delighted to share with you a new simulation that we have developed and a new line of simulations focusing on the needs of teachers and really building on the premise that at the end of the day, we know that experience is the best teacher but we also know that the School of Hard Knocks is rather painful. And so what we look to do is essentially, especially in schools, um, to provide safe experience, if you will, or simulations that are online, that are scalable and flexible, that allow educators, that allow uh, leaders to be able to experience the challenges of dealing with stakeholders that often don't agree with each other, that are often uh, actually very much don't agree with each other, so your ability to make decisions, your ability to roll with it, so to speak, um, is challenged because it never quite feels good. You got, because there's so many different ways that things can be looked at, irrespective of what your perspective might be, which obviously has a role in this as well. And the opportunity to put that all together um, is what we look to do with the simulation technology and, and methodology. And when we develop simulations, we do that in collaboration with experts in the field. And we are delighted with the collaboration that we've had with Northern Arizona University, and in particular, Dr. Gretchen McAllister and Dr. Hoda Harati, um, who worked with us on the development of our first teacher sim simulation, which is about building inclusive classrooms, which you'll get to experience today. So I want to just quickly introduce them and then turn it over to them to lead you through this um, exercise, this experience today. So Dr. Gretchen McAllister is an Associate Professor of Teaching and Learning at Northern Arizona University, and her work focuses on examining instructional strategies in teacher education that help candidates to become more effective with all students and to address institutionalized forms of oppression. And Dr. Hoda Harati is an Educational Technology Instructor in the Department of Educational Specialties at Northern Arizona. Her area of research is adaptive learning, online learning technologies, learning analytics, and data-informed learning. And with that, it is my pleasure to turn it over to them uh, to take it from here. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. All right, my. Sorry about that. All right, so I'm going to provide you with a short overview of the power of simulations why we worked on this particular one. And then we're going to do, as I call it, playing. And then hopefully at the end, we'll have time for questions. We have set aside um, 90 minutes, but know that some of you may have, um, have only an hour. So we'll check in at, uh, depending on where you are in the country, we'll check in at four or two o'clock um, or one o'clock on the West Coast. So it's really a pleasure to be with you. We were excited about all the different kinds of institutions. And so simulations, as many of you probably know, can be powerful for, and I'll use the term teacher candidates. And for those of you that are working with novice teachers, um, I'll be using that term as well. And so we wanted a space that could provide teacher candidates with situated learning. And these actual situated learning opportunities foster reflective practice, connect theory to practice. But most importantly, and my work has centered on this, is to provide an intentional space to have difficult conversations. What we have found in over 20 years, especially in teacher education, is there's no time to talk about um, issues of racism, um, other forms of oppression and how they play out in school spaces. We talk about it in theory, but often in the classroom, finding space to have those difficult conversations just often isn't there and teachers the same in the classroom. So simulations provide us an opportunity for a purposeful space where we can have these difficult conversations. And most importantly, we are committed to creating an opportunity to make mistakes and to do it in a way where we don't actually hurt children. 
So in terms of students who identify as LGBTQI, uh, 2019, and actually every year for the last 10 years, GLSEN um, is a national organization that supports educators and students um, on the gender diversity and gender spectrum. And they create, um, actually offer a survey every year with thousands of students. So what's been interesting in the 2019, which is pre-pandemic, um, is that 70% of students who identify as LGBTQI are, were found to be highly depressed, 90% having trouble sleeping, and only 26% said they always feel safe in their school classrooms, and only 5% say all of their teachers and school staff are supportive of LGBTQI people. So this is a concern and has been actually over time, but even more heightened and now even in the pandemic even further heightened and school policies and curriculum can set up environments that can be both positive and negative and that's what this sim will be looking at and we particularly wanted to highlight challenge books because we believe books especially in a k-8 and middle school and then into the high school can be very good interventions curricularly to help bring up topics. And they can serve as windows where someone who's not a member of the community can learn about the community and it can set up conversations and build empathy and understanding. And they also importantly serve as mirrors where students are seeing themselves in the curriculum in the books. This particular um, design was for novices and teacher candidates who will become teachers or new teachers. So we base the decision choices to be some that are better than others and also based on experience of typical decisions that novices may make. The other piece of the simulation is you can't do a rewind in the middle of it. So when you're in the classroom, I can't rewind my day. <laughs> I can't rewind my decisions. So the simulation is designed that who's ever engaging in it, you have to keep moving forward. Once you reach the end, then you get to restart and actually try different decisions. And that's that mistake making. It's also designed to appeal to multiple contexts with various varying policies and politics. One of the joys that Hoda and I had was working with people in Pennsylvania, which has a very different context um, politically and educationally to Arizona. And so it was really fun to look at policies that were different, how different districts reacted, and then the policies around supporting students who identify as LGBTQI. This purpose of this particular simulation is to help foster knowledge of LGBTQI students in your classroom to help gain skills in building inclusive classroom curriculum and learning communities, provide opportunities to build efficacy around challenging issues. So building that confidence, foster understanding the relationship between the decisions I make and the potential consequences, and then enhance the understanding of the relationship of community members. So particularly in teacher education, we want our students to go into the school context knowing that schools sit in communities and it's those communities that you're constantly interacting with. So we will, um, Hoda's gonna direct us in playing the simulation and we'll be using the chat. So if you wanna open your chat box to have it handy, she'll also be using polling and she'll be using breakout rooms. If you've never used a breakout room, you'll get an invitation to join. And then she will be giving you directions on what to do in the breakout room. And we send little messages and we'll close you and then you come back to the main room. So I'm gonna hand it over to you, Hoda. Thank you so much, Gretchen. So hello everyone and welcome to our session today. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. Here is here at Arizona, it's 12, 11. So for us, it's still noon. Are you ready to play? Great. So as uh, Gretchen said, this particular sim is about building inclusive classroom and defending challenge books. Uh, so you play as a sixth grade teacher during this sim. 
a parent contacts you regarding a book report on George by Alex Gino, one of the students in the class chose this book for their book report. Uh, you have been conducting a year focus on reading uh, by having students put up book commercials. And the challenge that you will face during this simulation is navigating the use of book that focus on uh, LGBTQI identity. And the trade-offs that you need to consider during this sim is it's addressing parents' concerns while also addressing needs of students, trying to figure out what message will be sent if book not allowed for students versus concerns of parents and dealing with the administration and school board while helping student advocate for, the, for um, their interest. So if you're ready, I'm going to share my screen and we play it together. Sorry, just a second. So during this simulation, um, you or even all the teacher candidates that have access to this school sim uh, will be provided with different um, resources, books, articles to help them to, um, to have the better idea about the choices that they can make. Another point that I need to tell you is that there isn't any wrong or right answer. So um, just we need to think about the possible choices that teachers have in front of them and choose the best. Uh, um, choice among those. And in this simulation, we have different characters uh, that play a role. Carissa and her mother, Angela, and Gabe and her mother, uh, his mother, Kate, Lauren, the librarian, the principal, and Eric, which is the LGBTQI advocate. Welcome to Defending Challenged Books. In this simulation, you are a sixth grade teacher at Jabulani K-8 school in a mid-sized school district. You have established yourself as a supporter of gender diversity and are recognized as such across grade levels. This simulation will help you use literacy to build inclusive classrooms. You will be introduced to a real-life scenario where you will be presented with challenges and choices. Your decisions will lead to interactions and consequences as you move through the simulation. At the end of the simulation, you will be provided with specific feedback on the choices you made in a feedback report. We hope this experience will offer you some insight to apply your practice. There are two students who play a key role in this scenario, Clarissa and Gabe. Clarissa is very open and inquisitive and an above grade level reader. She is given lots of support by her mother, Angela. Gabe is more guarded but still curious. His mother, Kate, is very involved at the school and is the current president of the Parent Teacher Organization, or PTO. Kate and Angela are friends. At the beginning of the school year, you gave a book commercial assignment and have been posting videos the students created up to the class webpage. Please review the assignment and Clarissa's report here. And this is the class website which includes Carissa's report on it. And I'm going to show you her report on the George book. Sorry. My book is George by Alex Gino. It's about a fourth grade boy who feels more like a girl. He wants to be in a play as a character named Charlotte, but he isn't allowed. This story is about his journey of trying to be exactly who she wants to be. I really like this story because it shows the difficulties of being yourself. Also, it is super important to remember that we must support our peers and make them feel comfortable so they can be who they want to be. I recommend this story for kids in middle school who face bullying and other struggles. Also, this is very well written and it's a quick read. 
So this is the start of the challenge. Friday afternoon. This week is over and you are headed for the weekend. As you collect your things to leave, you notice a voicemail notification. It looks like it is from Kate, the very involved parent of your student game. Kate is great about supporting class activities and events. Even with her duties as current PTO president, she manages to stay involved in the classroom. You speak with her regularly and wonder what her message is about. Okay. Voicemail from Kate. You listen to Kate's message. Hi, it's Kate. I'm sure you've had a long week, but I was just on the classroom website and was concerned about some of what I was seeing. I would really like to speak with you when you can. Thanks, and have a nice weekend. After hearing the voicemail from Kate, how are you feeling about interacting with this parent? I'm feeling good, no problem. Or, I'm doing okay, I guess. Or, I'm feeling a little nervous. Or, I'm feeling pretty anxious. Or, I'm feeling afraid and I'm starting to freak out. Okay, please use the chat box to tell us about your feeling to if you receive such a such a message from parents. Do you feel okay? Do you feel good? Nervous, anxious, freak out? Doing okay, nervous. Okay, okay, a lot of nervous. A lot of nervous. Doing okay. A lot of nervous. Doing okay, I guess, nervous. Okay, so let's choose this one. I'm feeling a little nervous and you aren't right. How will you respond to Kate's voicemail? Choose one of the options below. Call Kate immediately after getting her voicemail. You could wait until after the weekend since it is a Friday, but perhaps her concern should be known. Or text Kate to say you will call her on Monday. If her concern is serious, she will text you back. Or wait until Monday to respond to Kate. You don't want to bother her over the weekend. Or email the principal instead of responding to Kate. It might be helpful to gain insights as to how to handle the call and to get any background information on Kate to help you with the call. Okay, let me pull up the poll. What do you think about this? Number one, number two, number three, or number five? Okay, so you have six seconds to answer this poll. Okay, great. So let's see the result. So most of you think that you emailed the principal instead of responding to Kate. So let's pick this option to see what is the next. You indicated that rather than getting back to Kate, you would email the principal instead. What would you write in your email? Who would you copy? So this is actually a very important question that uh, it really depends on your school district, your uh, experience, and also your policy. I would like to uh, put you in breakout room to think about this question and how we would answer to write the email. Okay, so ready to go to breakout rooms? So we will have uh, about four to five minutes.
Okay, everyone, welcome back. So, so I think that we're waiting for three more people to come back. Okay, great. How was it? Uh, great, cool. Would you please uh, uh, write your responses to the chat box and just I select one of them uh, and copy and paste it here in the in the box. Don't be shy. We would focus on gathering a meeting to discuss the issue, but keep our feelings or opinions out of the email initially. Okay, focus on a direct, factual email and ask the insider as soon as possible. We don't yet know what the, the issue is. Uh, uh, so uh, do you think you don't know the issue or you want to write in your email that we don't know the issue? Sanya, Sanya, how am I? Just oh, it's a, just neither me nor anyone in my group uh, felt that they would want to write to the principal at this point, so we don't have any. We don't have a draft. Okay, Sorry. okay, no problem. So just let me copy and paste here. I would have a face-to-face -face meeting, not through an email. Would say a little other than I have concern, parent. I would like to talk it through before calling back. Okay, great. So you can think about many many options that you can uh, write your email. But let's move on. Over the weekend, the principal received your email and emails Lauren asking her about the book and requests a list of all books in the library on gender identity. In the meantime, Kate calls Angela, Clarissa's mom. While they are friends, they see the book and Clarissa's book report very differently. Kate is surprised that Angela actually supported Clarissa's reading of the book and that Angela helped her with the book report. Angela defends the book and notes that it should be available to all students. Kate notes that she has a different opinion and is going to decide what steps need to be taken. After hanging up with Angela, Kate sends an email to Lauren, the librarian, and requests that the book be removed from the library. Email from Angela, Sunday, regarding, we need to talk, from Angela. Hi, I had a very disturbing conversation with Kate Nielsen, Apparently, she saw Clarissa's book report on the classroom site and basically freaked out. We had some discussion, but I need to speak with you about making sure our kids do not lose access to this and other books about identity. Let me know when we can speak on Monday. Happy Monday. I hate to pounce on you first thing, but I need your input. Over the weekend, I got an email from one of the parents in your classroom who had seen the commercial on the book, George. She's Gabe's mom, and she was concerned and is asking that we remove the book from the library. Since this is related specifically to your class and this assignment, I wanted to get your opinion on how to move forward. This was to Lauren, the librarian. How will you respond to Lauren's concerns? Choose an option from the list below. Assure Lauren that this is not a big deal. You've used this book for years now, and there's never been an issue. Or ask Lauren to come with you to meet with the principal. You want some support, so asking Lauren is one way to get that. Or tell Lauren you are going to reach out to other families. This might be a good method to check how large of an issue this book and the topic is, especially given that you have not had issues in prior years. Or 
Share with Lauren that if the book is banned, you will keep a copy in your classroom. This is one way to make sure the book is available to students and puts it out of harm's way from the library. So how you as a sixth grade teacher would answer to Lauren's concern? Choice one, two, three, or four. Choice two is going up and also choice four. Still choice two. Okay. So choice two was the most Uh, so let's choose this one and see the result. On Monday afternoon, your meeting with the principal offers the opportunity to advocate for an approach to the situation. She asks by stating her inclination to temporarily remove the book from the library. She asks for your recommendation. How will you respond? Ask the principal if she will keep the book in the library for the time being and add the subject to the agenda for this Wednesday's faculty meeting. This will put the concerns and possible decision into the faculty's hands. Or, ask the principal to keep the book in the library while reaching out to families and asking for input over the next few days. The principal can deal with family questions and concerns more easily. Or, acknowledge the principal's intent to temporarily remove the book from the library, but ask to keep a copy in your classroom. This might be a good compromise. Or, Advocate that the book should stay in the library, but require parental permission to check the book out. This allows access to the book, but also addresses parental concerns. Okay, now what is your best choice? Number one, two, three, or four. Number four. And choice one. Choice two, 17%, choice one, 33%, choice four, 50%. Okay, great, let's see the result. So number, oh, choice one and choice four is the same result, both 36%. Okay, so uh, let's go with the first one. Ask the principal if she will keep the book in the library for the time being and add the subject to the agenda for this Wednesday faculty meeting. And let's see what will happen next. Agreement on faculty meeting. The principal agrees. The book will stay in the library and the issue will be raised at the faculty meeting on Wednesday. Tuesday morning, email from Angela regarding, you rock, from Angela. I heard how you helped get the discussion around George on the agenda for this week's faculty meeting. Great job. I appreciate your continued commitment to an inclusive classroom and an inclusive school community. Thanks again. Do you think this is the end of the story? Getting support. You reach out to Eric and ask him to help you with your presentation to the faculty. He provides you with the materials at the links below. Please open each of these and keep them available throughout the simulation. Uh, so I will provide these links uh, in the chat box for you to give to have access to them. And 
And let's see the next page. Based on the resources provided and the situation, create a plan for the faculty meeting. This should include suggestions for your colleagues, as well as background information. So I provided you with the links uh, and resources, but you don't have to read them now. But I would like to, again, to put you in breakout room and to discuss about a plan that you would have uh, with based on your policy in your district and also your background uh, experience. OK, ready?
Hello, welcome back. Did you have a good conversation with your partners? Um, okay, you can use, use the chat box uh, and write a little bit about your discussion uh, that what you want to suggest in your plan. You don't need to be comprehensive, just a couple of sentences. No suggestion, nothing. Okay, we talk about getting small group discussion at tables. Talk about creating brave space. Okay, cool. Wanted to know if any other teachers had similar situations they were dealing with. Discuss what exactly is the issue, what's the, what's, uh, is the issue of the book. Important to ground the discussion around district school initiatives based on looking at materials and resources through an equity lens. Uh, tied to school and discrete goals mission. So great. So let me just copy and paste this one. Erin's response. All of you did a very good job. Just to save time, I want to copy and paste Eric's response here. Thank you so much for your great collaboration. Tuesday afternoon, principal stops by. On Tuesday afternoon, the principal stops by your classroom and tells you that she heard from Kate. After hearing about the book, Gabe signed it out and brought it home. Kate was surprised that the book was still in the library and was not happy about Gabe having access to it. She got wind of the faculty meeting and asked the principal if she could attend and present an alternative view. The principal told her no, that it was not a public meeting, but that her concerns were noted. Just wanted to let you know, she says before leaving. So do you see my screen now? Okay. So it is Tuesday afternoon and principal stops by. Uh, on Tuesday afternoon, the principal stops by your classroom and tells you that she heard from Kate after hearing about the book. Gabe signed it out and brought it home. Kate was surprised that the book was still in the library and was not uh, happy about Gabe having access to it. She got wind in the faculty meeting and asked the principal if she could attend and present an alternative view. She told her no, that is, that is was not a public meeting, but that her concerns were noted. Just wanted to let you know, she says before leaving. Wednesday, faculty meeting outcome. You participate in Wednesday's faculty meeting and present with regard to book access. The outcome of the meeting is that LGBTQ books require parental permission to borrow. This decision does alleviate some parents' concerns regarding access to these books, but it could also be a cause for anxiety among students on the gender spectrum. So I'm a seventh and eighth grader, seventh and sixth graders always ruin things. They said it was our fault that they couldn't borrow George from the library without their parents' permission. That seems dumb. Why would their parents be okay with it? What will you say to Clarissa and Gabe? Uh, so what do you say as a sixth grade teacher when uh, Clarissa and Gabe come to your desk and talk about the book? You can use the chat box. Yes, as Gretchen said, uh, uh, wrote this is a great point about new policies that can out students inadvertently. So, what do you say? Do you suggest them um, just do you give them the book 
or do you tell them that they need to wait? What do you tell them? Nothing. You don't answer them at all. So let's still say, I don't respond. <laughs> there is question. So they blow them off. <laughs> you shouldn't know anything, the little kids. Yeah. <laughs> they take their voice away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. You just wrote as your response. Which of the following would you select as your reply to Clarissa and Gate? You assure the students that all books will be accessible. You want to calm the students' concerns. Or thank the students, then do nothing because it is already in the principal's hands. This puts the issue back where the ultimate power is with the principal. Or you hear Clarissa engage concerns and ask if they are willing to meet with the administration, noting that you are willing to go along with them and support them in the meeting. This approach will empower the students to take on issues. Or suggest that you, Lauren, and the students develop a plan to meet with the school board. By including the librarian, you are building an ally team. Again, there isn't any wrong or right answer. You need to just select the best choice that you think is good at that moment. Awesome, so let me open the poll. So what do you think? Choice not one, two, three, or four. Choice three and four are going up. Choice three, 60%. Choice four, 40%. Choice three is going up. Choice one, 13%. Choice two, 13%. Okay. So choice three had the most responses, 40%. You hear Carissa and Gibbs concern and ask if they are willing to meet with the administration, noting that you are willing to go along with them and support them in the meeting. Good choice. Okay. Getting input from Eric. After offering to support the students prepared for the meeting, you suggest they talk with an LGBTQ resource, Eric. You ask Eric to join you and the students for an after-school meeting. He helps you and the students come up with a plan. He also refers to these documents. Okay, again, I'm going to share with you this in the chat box because these are good resources. Let's see next what will happen after this. What would you suggest to the students in terms of a plan for the meeting? Uh, so do you want to share something in the chat box again? That what would you suggest to students to have a meeting? Or you say no, it's not a good idea. It Can takes we... a lot of time. Can we? chat a little in big yeah. rooms um in the breakout rooms sure or here either way okay let's do it chat here because i think that many people oh, nice. don't ask them about their feelings julia good point yeah that's great them to tell you what they want to accomplish. Great. Then help them plan backward. Oh, that's interesting. Important to allow students to have voice and listen with no promises. 
Okay, that's great. Write it out. I feel like the options so far lean heavily toward actions before doing dialogue and connecting to people and hearing each other. So you want to have more dialogue. Great. Mm -hmm. And Gretchen asked, are many of you in districts where they would be open to students presenting to school boards and advocating? Shayla, I have to go to this missile. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Good to see you here. Okay, so let's move on and thank you for your responses. Thursday, meeting with the principal. You all go meet with the principal. Then the principal talks with the students and tells them that the book is available for sign out only, as decided at the faculty meeting. After hearing the principal's response, what will you do next? Don't pursue the issue any longer. This is clearly resolved. Don't risk antagonizing the principal with any further action. Or, encourage the students to take the issue to the school board. This issue goes beyond the school and should be addressed at the district level. Okay, don't pursue the issue any longer or encourage the students to take the issue to the school board. All choice one and choice two are going hand in hand. Now choice two has more responses. Okay. Let's text number two, encourage the students to take the issue to the school board. The students agree to go before the school board. You meet with them to plan a presentation and work with them on a speech and various suggestions they can provide the school board. How would you go about doing this? And what suggestions would you make? Do you like to go to the to the discuss to the uh, breakout room to discuss? Yeah. Okay. So I put this one into chat box for you to have access to it, and we will have um, five minutes to discuss about this. Okay.
Welcome back. Did you come up with good suggestions? Uh, if you like to turn on your microphone and talk, that is pretty good. Uh, but if you don't want, you can write it down in the chat about the suggestions that you came up with your group mates. Jennifer said, we really want the principal to be in the lead with the students. Mm -hmm. Wait. We found there were strong differences on how this would be received in different regions. Yes, absolutely right. I found it fascinating, the different perspectives between the teacher and principal, also how to use local policies on curriculum materials would be key to, to use. Yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, true. So every district has their own policies and regulation and it might change what you want to do in your school. And Hoda, Dr. Mason's willing to share. Yeah, sure, Dr. Mason. Hey there, we had a really wonderful, rich conversation. I won't put you on the spot, ladies, but it was a rich conversation along with James. And one of the things that um, Senya brought up, which I thought was wonderful, is the idea around that novice or that particular educator, I won't even say novice, but that particular educator, uh, perhaps not having had the option in the options to, uh, or the, the different um, selections to be able to have the dialogue to bring solution with the teacher. Um, I, you know, we, we then talked about how, I think it's super clever of the simulation having presented the choices and what they, they have presented because so often we may agree that it is that in the earlier days and years until we really gain the confidence and the experience that we may not feel that we can have that conversation around a contentious topic. And it's not unusual for that educator to want to go and gain the insight of their principal. Um, and then, you know, so what does it look like to get that type of experience? And here we are, you know, uh, school sims, right? Um, having the, right, having these conversations in advance to build and layer upon the experiences before this actually happens. And so okay. Cindy, I thought that you brought up a really, really great point. Um, and again, just the cleverness of how this particular simulation and so of course others have been designed to create. And as James said, really to provoke thinking. And I yeah. wonder, um, Eden, um, yourself, um, you know, we all had a really rich conversation. Do you guys want to add to that? Rachel, you're on mute. Yeah, and I think um, it really is a jumping off point. Um, and there will be a um, an addendum to the simulation guide to offer opportunities to have lots of different conversations related to the sim. So we had a rich conversation too about um, what principals could be doing. And of course, this is taking the lens of the teacher perspective. And I think you hit it on the head. And I'm using the word novice because that was our targeted group that there is not a lot of efficacy and confidence in dealing with these. And so can I even set up a dialogue with certain principals? Mm -hmm. And what I find fascinating and continue is that depending on the state you're from and the district, that environment is very different. And so how do we, there's no one size fits all, but I think that, um, trying to be provocative so we've got but I, I really am loving the feedback and responses because it's really helping me um, think more deeply about some of the scaffolds to foster more dialogue so 
thank you all so very much. It's really wonderful. Thank you, Gretchen. Any <laughs> and Jennifer, now? yes, welcome. Oh, I just, yes, in Massachusetts, all novice teachers have a mentor and hopefully that's where they would start. Go Massachusetts, Arizona, <laughs> no way. <laughs> New Mexico, no. We'll be there. We'll be there. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, do you, anyone else want to share something? Oh, right. Ian, nice. Arkansas. Great. What about other school districts in other states? Oh, one last thing I'll add, I'll add to that with your asking other states here in Ohio, and then I hail originally from South Carolina, while there are some programs in place, such as mentorships for the novice and the emerging educators, what I have not found both as a practitioner and uh, in the role I am doing now, which is not in the building, but outside of that as a consultant, is that this piece is missing, the simulations of being able to have the experience and talk about best decision making processes before it happens. So the mentorship and the programs are in place, but it's more retroactive in nature versus proactive. A large aspect is that they're able to see the practicing happening on site and they're able to access the mentor when something is occurring at the time or post, but not where it's a risk-free environment. Just a thought. Great, thank you so much. Many good thoughts and opinions and suggestions. Good, thank you. Anyone else would like to share something about your state, about your school district? Erin, do you want to share something? So I had the great opportunity um, of teaching in the principal preparation program at UConn and I had my class last night Oh. had the great opportunity to do a simulation um, with six of in a group of six i'm telling you they were standing up they were leaning over they were you know the, the peer collaboration and the opportunity to engage mm -hmm. in this manner and i love the proactive uh you know as dr mason put out there um you know the what a, and they said we will do more <laughs> you know like <laughs> I love the fact, I don't want to do it alone. I love the fact that there were six of us, you know, arguing about how we should answer and giving good rationale. So that's this type of, uh, for novice teachers, I, I can't begin to tell you how powerful something like this would be. Yeah. That, oh, that's great. Cool. Thank you so much, Ari. Okay, so let's move on to the next decision or the epilogue. Clear so makes a clear and strong presentation at the school board meeting. The school board does not make a decision because they want more time for discussion on the issue. Gabe was in the audience with his mother, but did not participate in the presentation. Your reputation as an ally to LGBTQ students has increased as the other community members saw your support of Clarissa. We hope this experience has offered you some insight to apply in your practice. So you did a very good job. Thank you all. Considering feedback. Thank you for participating in the simulation. On the next screen, you will see a feedback report showing your choices for each decision, along with written feedback for each one. This feedback is meant to be a prompt to reflect on your choice in light of various considerations. You may wish to print your feedback report using the printer icon on the next screen. Okay, so at the end of uh, the CM, you will see the feedback. You will, you, the students uh, can read the learning objective of each of those decision points that you choose. They can see their own choice and also the other choices that were available and they didn't pick and also a feedback towards their own uh, choice. So this is a great tool for them to think about uh, their choices and how much they were successful in doing this thing. Questions and concerns, anything, Gretchen? Okay, thank you all.
Yeah, we wanted to share a couple things. Um, and I know I've spoken with a couple people and this is really geared towards novices so that um, having these challenging conversations um, and I'm trying to share, sorry, I'm not sharing. So we were wondering, you know, how given the context um, in your situation, how might you use this? So we heard one idea of with the principals, I, I don't know if those were the principal school sim ones, but how might you use this? What other lessons or conversations stemming from the STEM might you have? Um, and you could write your ideas in the chat or open up. For example, one of the topics I'll be bringing up with my students is the role of race in the context. Kate is a white woman and Angela is African-American. And so how might race be playing out in this context? And another colleague and I were going back and forth as we were discussing this sim about the role of white privilege. And so if I'm a teacher and I immediately respond to Kate, does she have power because she's the PTO president? Does she have power because, or am I just responding because she's a parent of one of my students? Or, you know, are there racial dynamics going on there? So this is very messy, nuanced. And so just bringing it up, I know to my teacher candidates is important as I am trying to encourage them to have a much better understanding of the context in which they are working so that they can build al allyship and to be good allies. And so um, what other lessons might you have seen that um, would stem from the sim or how might you use this in your course or your school context? And feel free to just open up the microphone or the chat and I already see some chats, great. And I like this idea about the novice who might just pick up the phone, talk to the parent and not realize um, the principal by not working with the principal that the principal could be blindsided. And that is actually more typical of my teacher candidates before student teaching that they would respond in that way. So anyone wanna share? Yeah, yeah, Jennifer. One thing we talk about is where the novice brings exper expertise to the table that the more veteran staff doesn't, a different mindset. Sorry, I don't know if that was clear as I was trying to type it, but a lot of times when, when we talk with um, veteran versus novice teachers, the issue of um, you know, the novice isn't novice in everything. They're novice teachers, but they they might have a lot of expertise in technology, for example, right? And they have the greater skill set. And so sometimes when we're talking about um, issues that are a little more um, built into the DNA of the younger generation, um, they might they might bring a perspective and a way of thinking about issues like gender and race to the table that the more veteran teachers struggle with. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, nice, cool. And also Dr. Mason wrote, definitely to build conversation around equity for every student, right? Yeah. Can I expound? Yeah, sure, go ahead. All right. uh, in the first group we talked about, what does the one child need that perhaps the other child doesn't need? And I know oftentimes, especially in the age we're living in right now, as it relates to CRT and racial uh, various issues around that, while it is absolutely without doubt important, in this case, what was at the forefront was a child's identity and needing support around that. And again, what's very clever about this particular simulation and is with others is that at the very core, there is conversations to be held 
around what is one's collection of ideas and beliefs. And I liked it. I think it was just Jennifer, right? Jennifer, uh, that shared that you mentioned that the novice teacher may be novice in his or her teaching experience, but they bring other experiences. And so that Jennifer, you got me to thinking that in addition to that, they also bring their own collection of beliefs and ideas. And how do we build district-wide efficacy with equity for every student, both academically, both uh, in this case, you know, sexual preference or any other identity issue? And how do we really, really focus and remove any and every barrier for any student so that they can focus on the joy of learning? Um, and having those rich conversations, I think it was Aaron um, who shared that, you know, just last yesterday, right, Aaron, you were saying that you guys were gathered around the six of you and having those provoking conversations. That's what this does. Like, that's what the school sims does. And you have to be able to be, be willing to just not only integrate it, but use it for a tool that's the beginning of incredible conversations to say, yeah, you know, not only are we talking about it, but we really are about removing any and every barrier that the child needs around social, emotional, financial, whatever support. So um, I'll be quiet because obviously I'm super passionate about it all. So there, back to you. Thank you. I, I'll respond very quickly to Dr. Mason, but um, I we were talking in our group, you know, from being from mass, some of this felt like I was in a foreign land um, listening to what might might happen. But the reality is it it can happen that that any issue can become this runaway train. I felt like this was a runaway train that two little toes were gonna be in front of a school board, um, you know, <laughs> promoting a cause that I, I felt landed squarely on the leadership. But um, we've all had things that became this runaway train. And so for me, the the simulation gets you thinking about how do things get out of kind of get out of your own control and what do you do when you feel like that has happened and all of a sudden you're in a place where you didn't intend to be um and how do you how do you rein it back in who do you go to um what's the process so even though I was in a situation that I thought I hope I would never be here um it happens so um that was part of the good conversation and the good simulation experience yeah cool also, we have a couple of good points in the chat box. Probably careful the motivation rationale behind each option from the get go and exploring the options that are not on the list. Having students, novice teachers discuss answers, but ensuring that an experienced guide is posting critical question to them. Also thinking critically about building relationships throughout each simulation. That's great. Thank you. Did you yeah, want I to think, in on well, that? I just want to, I just want to add that I think thinking about this simulation, I am, it is very strongly in my mind that a guide is needed, like someone is needed to facilitate thinking around all of these options if we're dealing with novices or, or pre-service teachers, because I think a, a lot of those options, some of those options were kind of very emotionally driven, very um, almost like irrational, quick decisions. And I think they might have made sense to someone in the moment. But I think it's so important to have that more experienced teacher um, or teacher educator guiding through. So I see this tool as like absolutely wonderful for provoking discussions as long as those discussions are facilitated carefully. Yes. Thank you. Okay, that, that really other ideas. Oh, go ahead, Ken. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, Gretchen. That really is an important point, right? The Sims are designed to be blended. Um, whether it's part of a curriculum in a university setting, whether it's part of PD in a district or school setting, whether it's uh, part of a mentor relationship that one would have uh, or part of a PLC, right? That there, there is that opportunity to, to have a context inside of which discussion is going to be had. And that can still be done asynchronously if it's done 
thoughtfully and with an assignment, right? So that the critical thinking is still being captured, whether it's on the screens where their prompts are or an alternative assignment, because you can obviously do, as was mentioned, they're designed to provoke, they're designed to make you to engage emotionally. Um, it could be about this topic specifically, because that may be something that's going on in your school or district, or it could be something else that's going on, as, as Dr. Mason mentioned, right? There are other, there are other topics that are emotionally um, engaging in our schools that it's important that we find strategies for dealing with them, whatever the topic. And so having that opportunity to, to be into that space, to think about alternatives, to try stuff out, right? You don't have to get it right. That's the goal here is really not to get it right, in fact, right? Because we, we learn from our mistakes. We learn from failing. This is an opportunity to do that. But as you suggested, it should be guided. And the importance of having that, that, that strong blend with whatever you're doing and the beauty of the modality is that it can blend with almost anything it is really an important component. So Gretchen is, is going to blend it to one of her classes in the near future. So Gretchen, maybe you can record it. <laughs> you record your class and demo it when you're in there. Uh, I don't know about to, that. Ask the teacher candidates mm -hmm. to just play with that. Yeah, I think the candidates feel more calm and in a private space. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I will be, um, I am developing an addendum to the simulation guide that is particular to this the simulation to exactly do what you're um, asking. So um, I really appreciate all this wonderful feedback. Yeah. Okay, are there other, um, we did want to also share um, the wonderful connections um, and, sorry. So the simulation um, is aligned with various standards and you can see in terms of what we call the INTAS standards for those of you in teacher education, um, supporting gender non-conforming students and there will be um, several others that School Sims is working on to building inclusive classrooms and supporting the DEI framework. And so looking at professional learning and ethical practice, planning for instruction, sorry, learner environments, learning differences, learner development and leadership and collaboration. And then um, we do have, if Ken or Brian wanna explain the screen, is this a feedback form, Ken? Um, actually, uh, that would be a Brian question. I'm sorry, the um, <laughs> QR codes are, um, I'm not sure where they go. <laughs> um, well, you can um, also see on the School Sims uh, website, the new Sims, um, both leadership and the teacher Sims, which is really focused on teacher education and novice teachers. Though, as everyone was talking, um, we really have a, a good sense that if used well and facilitated well, they can be used in a variety of environments. 